talk about the old douchey tapes. Uh, this is a film that was released by Arrow in the UK on streaming and on um, Blu-ray. I, I saw it on streaming, but I'm definitely buying the Blu-ray soon because uh, there's a lot of extras I want to see because um, after watching the film, there's a lot of interesting stuff that I want to find out more about. But the old douchey tape is based on this guy from the 90s, 80s and 90s. He was a troubled soul. He was a singer from a outrage band with the mentors who were always doing insane things that were outrageous and they were doing stuff they called rape rock which is is, is as bad taste as you think it is going to be it's just terrible taste and it's all about the phenomenon of that guy but it's done from a, someone who was recording at the time someone who an, an act an outward character who knew the guy and had a, he, he bought some recording equipment for something else was, i think already did to record this guy i don't know can't quite remember but he started recording the old douchey as he went on behind the scenes and as he was on stage and just talking to him and finding out more about him as well as talking to like uh, the people around him at the time as well and seeing who they were, what they were about and what they were, what was their um, plans for life. And it's really just a look at the kind of... Um, rage rock sensation of the 80s and 90s in America specifically around LA and there was stuff like Guar and all these other bands at the same time doing the same stuff but El Duce was the you know the most famous one the infamous one because uh, some of the Guar who did themselves up in all these outrageous costumes it was all a show it was obviously a show they were outrageous but they were you weren't meant to take them seriously it was a joke El Duce pushed a lot more. El Duce said, said and recorded things that were genuinely offensive and he did. He was hard to deal with for people and dealing with him as a person was also very difficult for his friends. So this was not as a look at someone who was very, very dysfunctional. But that's what's interesting with the film is he's a very dysfunctional person. It's... Is try to work out why is he why is he like this? Why is this person like this? And some of it seems to be due to his background, some of it even to do with his character. Like he's an impatient person, um probably has undiagnosed like ADD. Like he seems to not be able to sit straight and do anything. He's seems to always be going for the high of the next charge of annoying someone. And he seems kind of selfish and um, he's overweight, he drink. he's an alcoholic, he's very undisciplined, but he's on stage and does a lot of rants and so he's, he's hard to deal with. His own band, as the film goes on, finds it harder to deal with him because he doesn't turn up to a lot of the gigs they book for them and it's hard to get to book gigs for these for this band of mentors because they are so outrageous and they do get a lot of controversy around them. And this is a guy who'd go on Jerry Springer stuff and actually just insult people to their faces and didn't care. And he would he would wear this mask so you can see what's behind it. So maybe he'd take it off every so often to show who he was. So he didn't even care that people knew who he was. Didn't matter to him. But he preferred having a mask on to see these horrible things. And it was just like a very dysfunctional person. As a person who um, enjoyed... T mentally torturing people on stage but it was a, an act though it was it was entertainment but it was entertainment it was really pushing the limits of what was acceptable and he was one of those people who were using the example in the 90s of the moral majority trying to say these people are disgusting these are horrible and he was the kind of guy who'd show because it's hard to deny he was horrible <laughs> he was disgusting he was and it was like this is why all that stuff should be banned it's like no it's not one person is not a reason why I ever get to your band. But he was the poster boy for a lot of this kind of controversy because he didn't care. He was an alcoholic, he was a drunk, and he really um, knew how to p play around and get controversy around him to, for publicity. But he was also a person basically living on people's couches and drinking all the time, and he didn't have a home. And he relied on all his friends to um, basically help him out. So you're probably thinking, why should I watch this film? This guy sounds like a total dick. And he was a total dick. 
but it is fascinating. It's fascinating to see how a human being can fail so badly in a life. Like, um, he, he, his father was a scientist who was a bit authoritarian and who hated him, basically because he would never go to school apart from music. And he says a lot of rage came from him dealing with his father. Because him and his sister were the two people his father really hated. And they, when he and his father weren't talking after a while, there was a lot of dysfunction. And it was a very idealistic childhood, ideal childhood on the surface. But behind the scenes, he was getting beaten a lot by his father, who was disappointed in him. It was like almost like, this is how you do not bring up a child who is a bit difficult. This is exactly the thing you do not do, but his father did do it. So it's like, it obviously scarred him in a way that he couldn't really express. Back from this rage rock, and he would say it was horrible stuff. And his way of dealing with it, and he even joked with this, was he's pa- he was traumatised by his father, he's passed on trauma to someone else to deal with, and they'll deal with it by passing on trauma to someone else. He made jokes about that. But it was obviously what he was doing. It was like He was self-aware enough to know it, but... Um, he wasn't going to deal with it in any way apart from you know, drinking himself into oblivion. And he basically um, would argue a lot with his own bandmates and um, one of them ended up uh, dying through the film, during the film. During the course of the film, halfway through one of the bandmates died and they just move on and that's it. And there's no like um, memorial or anything, just like he died. It wasn't very good. It's like, <laughs> that's pretty cruel. And the whole film is like that. It's like there's a lot of stuff that will shock you. And there's like his girlfriend who is dating someone who's fat, ugly, and he does rape rap, which is a rape rock, which is just terrible. And you're watching her, and she just seems like, vacant and weird. And everyone seems vacant. I mean, there's one guy who's his bandmate, who's known him since he was a kid, who seems a bit more intellectual. But the more he talks, the more you think. He's read more books, but he's he also feels kind of dysfunctional in his own way. Doesn't really feel like he's that smart. He's um, he he can he's smart enough to intellectualize his own fail, failures, but he's he's not as smart as he thinks he is. So it's like there's that kind of feeling, and there's other people around him in that area of people who are like strippers and things who um, know him, you know, and he talking is like. They're dysfunctional as well. It's interesting watching these people who are very dysfunctional and um, obviously have, are going through tough times during that thing. Some of them get out of it and are doing fine now, but some of them, like El Dushi, didn't. So it's a, it's a look of the kind of darker side of human nature and how people can actually become self-indulgent, self-destructive and how it slowly takes effect rather than just a quick flash. And what I basically this film is, it's a bit of the slow process of self-destruction. That's what it feels like watching it. It's a bit. It's a slow process of this guy falling apart, becoming more and more dependent on drink, becoming less and less reliable for his bandmates, and it's the slow moving depression of these other people around him, dealing with him, dealing with their lives that haven't worked out the way they wanted, and just this idea of this rock area that once was popular but now it's becoming less and less relevant in the music industry, and people have, people have moved on from it, so they're just relying on a gig, whatever gig they can get. And they've got a leading, ma- leading singer who's the person who brings everyone in, but is also the least unre- most unreliable person they know. And he's becoming more and more of a joke as time goes on, as he becomes more and more alcoholic, and more and more reliant on alcohol to s- function in any possible way. So it's just sl- the slow process of how lives fall apart, and how it's just not just one thing, it's a slow process that takes place over years. Even though you see most of this take place over a short period of time, you see stuff what happened in the past, you also see what happened later on, briefly. But it takes place over all these recordings that a guy made over over a summer, basically, in LA, when everything was starting to spin out of control, so you're seeing like the slow-moving destruction of someone. And it is really horrible to watch, but it's also it's like, this person knows what he's doing, the person who's destroying himself knows what he's doing. He knows his own fate, probably. Like, he knows he wasn't going to live that long. And he's probably just going to cause as much trouble as possible. So it's really fascinating to watch a subculture that is dying. A person who's dying within the subculture. And, you know, it's already becoming a parody of itself. It's already becoming kind of campy and not that serious. And it was never really serious because it was basically based on rage. 
and misogyny and horrible stuff that you don't really, if you're going to lean into that, it's going to limit your options. And this guy didn't seem to care about his future. He seemed to enjoy destroying his future. So that's why it's a fascinating film. So I'd highly recommend watching it. But it is disturbing. Not in our kind of throwing weird stuff at screen way. It's just the slow way people can destroy themselves and the slow process of it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, it's not my usual, but I thought it was worth bringing up this film to try and get people to watch it because it is really interesting. Okay, bye for now. We're back soon with something a bit more cheerful. <laughs>